Justin Watson's been a guy who's tore it up this year. A lot of people were doubting him in the preseason. He came out and has been probably the biggest play receiver we've had uh, this year so far. If you look at the big moments as far as our offense, I think you can point to Justin Watson uh, being that, that guy this year. But obviously Watson dislocated his elbow last week against the Broncos and expected to miss a few weeks. They don't know how long they haven't really said that. I think, I think I read somewhere four to five possibly. So it begs the question, what's the wide receiver that's going to step up in his absence? MVS. I've seen some people calling him MVS. That's the new, the new nickname I've, I've seen um, MVS. Um, MVS has not exceeded two catches in a game this year. Uh, Sky Moore um, has two catches or less in four of the six games. So those two guys really haven't done much this year. Uh, KT, we're starting to get him more acclimated. I mean, last week, three catches, nine yards, touchdown. Rasheed Rice has looked like the only guy who stepped up in, in this whole equation, all, all the receivers. But what guy are you looking for who could emerge uh, this week without Justin Watson? And are we looking at Justin Ross season, JG, JD? Is it time to get some Justin Ross action? All right. So I, I see you try to bait me toward, toward the conversation. <laughs> Go that way. All right. I'll play. I'll play, okay, Marcus. I'll, I'll, I'll play. I'll play with you. All right. So here's the deal, okay. Rasheed Rice has been uh, uh, outstanding. He has in the past few games catching the football. We know he's got a lot of explosiveness. We watch his athletic ability. He has. He brings a lot to the table. I think he's a guy that steps up for us. I think he'll be uh, that guy that's filling the role what Justin Watson was doing for us, uh, as far as in in that respect. Uh, Kadarius Tony is another guy that I think is probably the number two in, in my eyes. Uh, that's going to get a lot more looks. I think he's, he's he's starting to get a little bit more better, you know, because of his knee. Uh, was just going to take him some time, and Andy wanted to get him acclimated, right? And so it was easy throwing a couple of screens, a couple of little things here, you know, little hitches and whatnot for him to kind of get you know, on. Okay, now how you feel about these things, right? Now we're going to give you a little bit more, we're going to put a little bit more on your plate, Justin Ross. Okay. Here's, we'll talk about him. We know Justin Ross has the ability to go up and go catch the football. Okay. He's a very talented guy. He's a talented guy at Clemson. We just, you know, there's always a question about it, the medical thing. Uh, for whatever reason, he hadn't been getting the, the shots and opportunity. Okay. We don't quite know why. All right. We can speculate all we want. Okay. I have speculation. Is it, is it where he's not necessarily getting the things? What is it about him not getting out to the plate? We know he can go up there and and, and catch any ball. Like uh, uh, Embry said, we waited for a guy to like this to be in this room. Okay, so we waited for a guy to get like this in this room. Let's put this guy out on the field and see what he can do. We seen him go and snatch the ball out of the air, which was this. Yeah, we knew it. it was which was beautiful. Let's get him some things like in the red zone, but let's not make him a gadget guy just in the red zone guy. Put him out there in the regular field. Let him go do some things, okay? That's what I believe. Another guy that I'm looking for, okay? This is the fourth guy somewhere he needs to fit. And I think he just needs to get more opportunity from Patrick. I think we need to look at him a little bit more. Sky Moore, okay? I'll watch Sky in the games. Sky has been open several times. They're not getting open. That's just not true. There's some times Patrick's been missing these guys. He just has, okay? Sky Moore has been running some good routes. There's some balls that he could catch that sometimes we, we don't need to take the deep ball, which Pat is holding the ball, look at the deep ball, then Kelsey, those things. Give it to Sky Moore, let me do some, you know, some things. He can he can catch the football. We know that. All right. We just need to get the ball to him to get him some more confidence as well. And so, you know, comeback routes, double moves, things like that, he could possibly do. We know that. We know teams are going to give us a whole lot more. Uh, man coverage because they don't think we can get open because they hear it here and all oh, we can't get them in. Okay, let's a little bit more pick routes, things that we can do underneath, you know, cross routes, get guys open. I just think that if we get into having a scheme much better, some prop, better play calling, that's another thing, better play calling at a naggy, then I think, man, our offense will start looking a whole lot better. Okay, so Rasheed Rice, uh, Darius Tony, Justin Ross, and Sky Moore. Okay. Now, if MVS at any time decides to show up, okay, I welcome that. I think we all do. Okay. And I'm not a guy, I'm not really want to be down on, on, on MVS like that. But sometimes the reason we brought him here, sometimes we got to give him a shot too. Throw a couple deep balls. You know what? Just, hey, 
NBA, just go. Hit you a nine route. Hit you a streak. Just get down the field. We see if we can throw one up to you. See what you're going to do with it. Give them a chance. Give them an opportunity. All right? I'm ready for opportunities to start coming for these guys that's in the room a little bit more. Okay? And that right there is on um, PM15. Kind of get these guys kind of trusting them a little bit more. And I think it is a little bit of that trust issue. But also, too, I think it's you got to start – making some plays and some calls from Nagy and Andy to get these guys, um, you know, acclimated to what we're trying to do, man. Seriously, because this is what it's going to take. It's going to take these guys in real. Ultimately, these guys have been here to try to get them guys ready. Yeah. Um, MVS, the last last four games, three catches, one, 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 zero. Um, it's been pretty much a ghost out there. I think, um, yeah, I see someone, MG Slim, bro, must uh, is a ghost every game. And he is, and that's what it's come to. I mean, pretty much he's like not there. It's not existent. But I want to ask you, I saw somebody say it's politics, and they want to make sure they want to, they want to prove they're right about Sky Moore. But I want to ask you about how much of a leash certain guys get versus other guys. Sky Moore, second-round pick yeah, last year, and the MVS getting paid what he's getting paid. At what point do they're like, you know, like, although we've invested a lot in these guys, we kind of have to just go with if Ross is looking better, just go with Ross. I mean, it, it, at what point do teams kind of like, okay, we had a lot of invest in this guy. He's not producing at this point. We kind of have to just see what our other guys have at that point. How long does that take before that wear is off, JD, where they're like, okay, like, let's get Ross, let's give Ross MVS's reps or uh, Sky Moore's reps at this point? Or do you not do you not see that? Man, look, look, I, I've been I've been playing this game for a long time. Okay. And I know how these things work. Obviously, a guy that that you draft early. You give him a longer leash. You really do. But the guy's not producing. You have no reason or beholden to play the guy who's not getting open, who's not doing the things you asked him to do. That's just the reality of it. Matter of fact, if anything, you look like a genius bringing a guy who's undrafted and he's over here playing, right? So that's to me, is, is, is actually talking a little bit, you know, on a higher level when you bring a guy who's undrafted and he's killing it out here. So to me, some of that argument, well, well you got to keep going on Sky Moore. Yeah, I, I, I get that. He got a longer leash. We know he's going to be here for at least four years, obviously, other than like trading a guy or something like that. He's going to be here. He's your guy. But an undrafted free agent, if he's able to come out here and just absolutely show these guys up, that's even better. That's even better, right? Because what ends up happening, I'm, a, I'm just going to give you an example on contract talks in a sense. You have a guy like Austin Eckler. Okay, who we're playing next week or this week coming in that was undrafted free agent. Uh, he wasn't trying to kill the bank, you know, to try to get him signed again. You know what I mean? And so he was just like, look, I'm just trying to keep getting this shot to try to stay here. And, you know, I'm not I'm, I'm, I just want everybody to know that, look, I'm a team player. I want to just go out there and ball. So it really cost him a whole lot of money, which I thought Austin Eckler probably should have went out there and got more money than what he did when he pushed for it. It's just honestly for what he gave. An undrafted free agent could do the exact same thing. Like once he gets rooted into a system, he could push it like, hey, you know what? Look, they showed some loyalty to me. They wanted to sign me for a long-term deal. If we could get Justin Ross going like that, to me, that it, it speaks volumes into the evaluation process of your scouts in, you know, in Brett Veach, uh, and what they go into when they when they talk about bringing some guys here, some players. Because then it, what that does, it, it gives you credibility now, right? So I just, uh, you know, Scott Moore is a guy that that I think still needs to develop. I believe he still can help us. He's a talented guy. He's a talented receiver, man. I'm, I'm not down on him either. I just think that Scott Moore uh, needs to have a little bit more opportunity, you know. So I know it narrative, that whole deal, like, oh, man, they're not going to play him because, man, ain't nobody playing that. They ain't doing that. That's not how it works in the, in the NFL. It's real. It's it's what can you do for me lately? Okay. And the thing is, it's the performance business. Do you perform? Then you play. If you don't perform, you don't play. Pure and simple. They have MBS out there, so they've been waiting for him to perform. But I guarantee you, when you watch this week, you start watching and seeing. Now, obviously, you got an investment like $10 million. You got to make try to get a return on your investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not saying you don't do that. Okay. But if the guy's hurting you and he's just like he's just not doing anything, then hey man, uh we we need to you know reevaluate what we're doing with our money. Okay. So yeah. 
especially especially that penny pincher um, and uh, Brett Veach. Um, talking about Justin Ross, you said you want to get him acclimated all over the field, which I think most of us do. Most of us uh, Justin Ross fans want to get him acclimated all over the field. But what interest what's interesting is it seemed like in week one, in week two, he was we saw him more in the red zone. Last week, I don't he barely got any red zone reps, and, and obviously we, we were getting skewer in the red zone. We weren't doing really do much play calling. Was was kind of rough in the red zone. Um, rough. Are you kind of concerned? I mean, not concerned, but like it's interesting that he wasn't even in on the red zone snaps last week. And I thought that was what he was, his role was going to be primarily beginning half of the season. He didn't really see much of him in the red zone. Didn't really see much of him at all during that game. I mean, I, I don't understand that. There, there seems like there's no, like, I don't know. No, no, no like consistency with the, his role so far. No, I it, it, look, and we're, we're pushing for a guy to get red zone snaps. And we even have, we are, our, our, our red zone and short yardage is right now in this right period. And I think a lot of it is just a play calling in itself. And I, I, you know where I'm at with it. If we're not we're in the red zone, we should be giving the Pacheco the football. We should be getting McKinnon the football. And so I know we want to bring Justin Ross into this, this conversation, but there's other guys that need to get involved. We got Rice involved in some of these things. We should do a little bit more pick routes. Tony scored a touchdown uh, last week based off that. And so I think our play calling in the self needs to be a whole lot better, okay? So we can call it. Is, he, is Justin Ross going to be the answer to the things that we do? I don't know. Are we throwing the fade balls like we should? Are we going to call that? That's the question. We're going to call that. That's, hey, man, look, Pacheco needs to get the ball in the red zone, okay? We need to see the guys come out the football, hit guys in the mouth. That's where I'm at, okay? Everything else is built off that because if you if your run game is good in the red zone, play action opens up after that, right? Yeah. Then you get the one-on-ones that you need to in the back of the end zone, maybe to come back at the, at the, the first uh, part of the pile line, things of that nature. OK, I could go to the whole scheme of how you should do these things offensively. The question is, are we going to call it? That's the thing. And don't get cute. Call it off. You know, now all of a sudden you got three guys in the backfield. Tony's back there taking a snap. You know, Towns is sitting over. It. We don't need to be doing things like that. OK, let's go play some smash mouth football. OK, some strategic chess like calls going down in the red zone. All right. So that's where I'm at. It, it, that's that's the, that's. The, the game I'm talking about we need to be playing offensively is that right there. Yeah, I think everyone agrees with you. I think we saw someone here, uh, Div XRY, so tell me why MVS still gets playing time versus others if it ain't political, big bro, respectfully. Oh, yeah. Respe- well, respectfully, I'll tell you this. I think they still got a lot of confidence in MVS. I think they do. I think there's things that he's probably doing on, on camera that we're not necessarily on film that guys can see, okay? And that could that goes into the blocking, all right? And so we, Al Saunders used to preach this all the time. And he said, look, if you're not getting the, you know, the job done and maybe some of the routes, and sometimes it's just opening guys up. Sometimes MBS could be the guy clearing guys out. Okay. So there's a lot of roles that guys fit uh, that we need to understand how it goes into the scope of calling a play. Uh, he may make it getting some blocks. Rasheed Rice, I told you, you got to get better blocking. He, that, his last game was he, he was he was terrible in blocking. He was he wasn't very good. I would say that I wouldn't say terrible. He wasn't very good. He whipped on a couple of guys. Those get those blocks will get you a couple more touchdowns. It's gonna get you a couple more yards. So you got to take all of that in consideration. I know. I mean, that's just that's just how it is. So uh, respectfully, man, those things because we we look at catches, right? That's the only thing we look at as far as receivers them doing. Okay, that is part of their job, but it's not all their job. Uh, and so I get you. Uh, I want to see MVS, you know, getting, you know, some more shots. I think we need to give him a couple more opportunities. Um, so I, I just, and also too, we're going to get our return on the 10 million. We got, we got to do that. We got to do it. We ain't going to have a, a $10 million uh, bench warmer. Better not do it too. You're going to do that, man. Give that money to somebody else. If that's the case. So, yeah. Yeah, but, and I think with Watson being out there, it still allows for them to continue to see what what Sky or MVS can do. With Watson being out, it gives more reps for Ross to get in there and 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 play. It's play more even with those guys even being on the field, not necessarily taking those guys as reps, but making the best of of more reps with Watson being out. So I, I now hope that happens. That guy's the guy uh, says we need Eddie Kennison. JD, you're going to be at the game, and I'm I'm, I'm I, I can assume Eddie EK is going to be there. Can you see if you can bring him back. EK, man, I, hey, look, shoot, EK, man, I, I know that's that's a dog in itself, man. That's my brother right there. I probably see him after the game. 
And look, I, look, when I get out there, I'm going to do a little bit more homework. I'm going I'm to find out. I'm going to get some answers. I'm going to get some little bit more answers because I'm going to be in the building a little bit more, okay? Kind of talk, man. And so I, I'm, I'm just, you know, the thing is, there is a lot of questions that come out of here, but there's a lot that goes into it. And so I know uh, Andy and, 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 and the whole offensive side of the ball is not doing their due diligence on not playing a guy just because they say, well, look, we need, because he's earning $10 million this year, uh, we got to play. Uh, we we need to win, and we need to find out the combination of guys out there that need to win. Okay, so you know, so it takes time. Yeah, and uh, hopefully uh, us Rossers can be proud, Jady. You could go to the first the, the breakout game of uh, Justin Ross, and after the game, we we, we mentioned it uh, on our show, but after the Thursday night game, when they asked Pat about you know the young receivers, his reports, Rasheed Rice. He brought up Justin Ross was the first other guy he brought up and said, watch, Justin Ross is going to have a big game here soon, and Sky Moore is going to have a big game soon. But he said Justin Ross first, and I, you know what? I'm holding them to that. He said he said him first. So I'm thinking we got a Justin Ross breakout game coming, and I think that that's good, what you could be seeing on Sunday, J.D. Okay. Look, I'm, and I'm going to say this because I see a lot of it in the room too, them talking. Uh, Lit Ron 57 said, let's not act like Pat's playing his real potential. And that's true. Okay? that's That could be – talking about the elephant in the room. A lot of people don't want to, you know, admit that, right? Somehow it's just uh, blasphemous to not say, you know, to say that, okay? Oh, sh- don't say that too loud. But Pat knows, and he's been talking about that he needs to get better. A lot of that is getting the younger guys on the same page about what it is that he's thinking about. So, yeah, Pat needs to amp his game up. We know for the best quarterback in the league, we expect a lot more. Pat expects a lot more. OK, and I don't think that is scandalous to say those things. Right. Uh, and Pat's been looking for the long ball. He's been looking for Kelsey down the field, but he needs to get the ball out faster to some of these guys that are open. And I guarantee he's watching the film just like I'm watching the film. I'm just like, oh, this guy's open. He could throw this football. There's no reason why he can't see that. And so if he's going through his uh, his progression, one, two, three, I know he immediately he should be able to, you know, throw some balls, you know, on the dig route backside on the comebacks. You know, maybe he's got more coming out of the, you know, the the, the arrow route, um, all those things, right? So, you know, I, I, it's easy to blame, but I think the blame goes around in the offensive room, and they'll get it fixed. They'll get it fixed. So, hi everybody, thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns, and if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and anywhere else you get your podcasts.